Euden Chronicle Rising is the companion game to the upcoming Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes, developed by Sweet Code and series veterans Rabbit and Bear Studios, and that is exactly what piqued my interest in the Euden Chronicle project in the first place. And while the main game, 100 Heroes, will be a traditional turn-based JRPG, Rising is a bit different. So what is it actually? Why should you care? And is it even any good? Well, let's start with those first two questions. What is Euden Chronicle Rising, and why should you care? Rising is a single-player 2.5D action RPG set in the same world as, and serving as a prequel to, 100 Heroes. The game consists of 2D action combat, exploration and platforming, resource gathering, crafting, and town building. One of the main draws to Rising is the ability to meet and explore the backgrounds of several characters who will play key roles in 100 Heroes, as well as be introduced to the events that lead into that game. In Rising, you take control of CJ, a climbing axe-wielding adventurer as she journeys in search of treasure to the small mining town of New Neva, a town in shambles due to an earthquake that happened a few months prior. Upon arrival, CJ finds out that she needs an explorer's license to actually go exploring in the New Neva mines. To get one of these licenses, CJ visits the acting mayor of New Neva, who has cooked up a plan to help get her town back on its feet. Either charge an exorbitant amount for the license, or have adventurers help out the residents of the town with their needs in exchange for one. CJ obviously picks the latter and thus begins her journey to help the residents of New Neva and rebuild the town. But did you know that much like how CJ helps the residents of New Neva, you could help me by liking this video and subscribing to the channel? I also stream most days over on Twitch if that's your thing, and I will be doing a fresh playthrough of Euden Chronicle Rising, so if you have any questions or just want to hang out, stop by and say hi. Alright, so brief overview of what Rising is, what it's about, and shameless plug out of the way, let's talk about gameplay. As stated, the game is a 2.5D action RPG with exploration, platforming, resource gathering, crafting, and town building. Everything begins with the town of Nuneva. It's here that you will pick up quests, both main story and side quests, which will send you to the various areas outside of town such as the forests, mines, snowy peaks, and more. As you progress through the game and complete quests for the residents, different establishments will be unlocked and upgraded. For example, helping out the innkeeper will unlock the inn, which can provide temporary buffs such as increased attack, defense, item drop rate, and experience. Whereas helping out the smithy will unlock and upgrade the blacksmith, where you can upgrade the weapons and equipment of your party members. In addition to unlocking and upgrading establishments, completing quests for the residents of New Neva will also reward you with Bakwa, the currency for Euden Chronicle, experience points, as well as stamps. Stamps serve a small narrative role in that they are what CJ needs to acquire in order to obtain her explorer's license, but they also serve a gameplay purpose in that every 10 stamps you get, you are able to receive a reward. Quests themselves are generally not very complicated, with much of them being fetch quests to find specific items or resources. Still, quests, along with the main story, are what drives the exploration of Nuneva and its surrounding areas. While out exploring, you'll fight monsters, gather resources, find treasure chests, and occasionally solve some puzzles. There are even boss-type monsters you can encounter with pretty interesting and varied mechanics. You will also frequently run into obstacles which will block your path. Everything here though circles back around to quests and helping to rebuild New Neva, as without the right tools you can't gather resources, and to get those tools you'll need to unlock the proper establishments in town to purchase and upgrade them. The same goes for obstacles. For example, purchasing new equipment for CJ can unlock the ability to double jump, allowing you to more easily access difficult to reach areas. Eventually, you will also get the ability to make elemental runes that can then be socketed into your weapons and armor. And when socketed into a weapon, you gain the ability to break down special elemental rock formations that would otherwise block your progression. These can also help if you run into some difficult enemies or a challenging boss, as you can try equipping different elemental runes to gain an advantage. This is what I meant by everything begins with the town of New Neva. You talk to the residents to find out what they need and then go out and get it, thereby completing the quest. Completing certain quests will then unlock new establishments in town which can provide you with the key tools and upgrades to open up new areas for exploration outside of town, which in turn provide new resources and new quest opportunities and so on. Now let's talk combat. Combat in Euden Chronicle Rising is a sort of fast-paced hack and slash affair that takes place on a 2D plane. Early on combat is extremely simple with CJ only having access to a 2-hit ground combo, a 1-hit aerial combo after jumping, and a dash either forward or backwards. As you progress through the game though, things open up quite a bit. Gaining access to extra characters, for example, provides the ability to swap between them on the fly in combat, and proper timing of this swap can result in longer combos and bonuses to damage dealt. Each character is essentially mapped to one button, and pressing that button swaps to that character and attacks with them. Learning enemy attack patterns as well as their weaknesses, and swapping to the right character to handle a given situation is key to success in Rising. In addition to new characters, adding additional attack avenues during combat, purchasing equipment can as well. 
Using CJ as an example again, purchasing her new weapons can improve her base combo from 2 hits to 4 hits. And after upgrading another companion, Garo's gear, he can gain the ability to perform charge attacks, which are excellent at breaking enemy shields. As you progress further into Rising and start coming up against more challenging enemies and bosses, you will also want to experiment with equipping different elemental runes to your characters. If a boss uses earth damage against you, you can equip an earth element rune to your armor to reduce the incoming damage. Or you could equip a water element rune to your weapon to deal additional damage against bosses or enemies that are weak to water. In general though, combat will largely take on two forms, regular enemies and bosses. With regular enemies, you will generally just swap to the best character suited for dealing with a particular enemy and only use that character while dodging enemy attacks. When it comes to bosses though, things are a bit different. You will want to be dodging attacks as best you can, of course, but you will also want to be on the lookout for vulnerability windows. In these moments, you will attack a few times with one character, swap into another for a few hits, then swap into another for a few more hits in an effort to keep up your combo and deal as much damage as possible. Next, let's move on to character progression since we've kind of already touched on it a few times already. Like with most RPGs, in Eoden Chronicle Rising, you will gain experience whenever you kill enemies and complete quests, and get enough EXP and you'll level up, which will provide a boost to your character stats. But gaining levels is only a small portion of improving your characters as most of your power will come from purchasing and upgrading equipment, accessories, and runes. Upgrading weapons will increase your character's damage output, and upgrading armor will increase your character's defenses. Purchasing new, higher quality weapons and armor will not only provide the opportunity to gain increases via upgrading them, but they will also provide new avenues for attack such as increasing the number of hits in a combo, providing new abilities to a character, and more. Accessories can provide a myriad of benefits such as increasing individual stats by a percentage or increasing the likelihood of gathering high quality resources. And runes can either allow a character to deal a certain type of elemental damage with their weapons or take reduced damage from the runes element type. Additionally, there are a few other things you can do to improve your character's potential. The N, for example, can be used to provide a temporary buff such as 5% increased attack power or 5% increased EXP gain that lasts until you either choose to rest or the main story dictates that you must rest. Then there is a tavern, which allows you to use resources to cook up meals that not only heal a character's HP, but also provide a small but permanent stat increase. Now before we move on, I should mention that aside from completing the mini quests that the residents of New Neva will give you, all of this character progression is one of the core reasons you want to be collecting resources in Eudin Chronicle Rising, as upgrading and purchasing new gear does require resources. Alright, so now that we've covered what Rising is and its core gameplay mechanics, let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like about the game. And honestly, there actually isn't a whole lot that I didn't like about Rising. The gameplay loop of accepting quests, then going out to explore the game's many areas for resources, and then bringing those resources back and turning them in as you see New Neva grow was a satisfying experience. No quest took too long to complete, and even when backtracking to previously explored areas, something that you will do very, very often, the map sizes were small enough that it didn't really feel like a burden. Though I will say that the inclusion of fast travel points all throughout the world definitely did help with this. Another thing that helped contribute to the backtracking not feeling like a burden was the Metroidvania style of progression of areas, in that as you acquire new tools and improve them, you were able to gain access to previously inaccessible areas. I also thoroughly enjoyed Rising's combat. It does admittedly start out very slow, but the process of slowly unlocking the full combat potential of your team has its charms. Where I think the combat really shines though is with the boss encounters, as bosses had more unique and varied attacks when compared to normal enemies. The satisfaction of using their visual and audio cues to learn attack patterns and then punish vulnerability windows with long combos was a joy. And of course the musical score for Rising was a charm, something that is all the more important considering the game has no voice acting. But there are still a few things on the negative side that I do want to mention. And sticking with sound, I do want to bring up the game's sound effects. Overall these were fine, and the audio cues in combat and on bosses were a nice touch. However, I did notice that some of the environmental sound effects were much louder than everything else and could drown out some of the other sound effects and music. Now you could turn down the audio levels of the sound effects from the options menu, but that would turn all of them down, including those audio cues. Not a game breaker or anything, but definitely something that was noticeable. The last real negative I had with Eudin Chronicle Rising is one that admittedly most people won't have, and that was with the text, or more specifically the font. Many text boxes had quite a bit of text crammed into them, and I'm sure the font chosen was chosen specifically to accommodate that. But as someone with dyslexia, I found the choice of font and rising to be somewhat straining on the eyes and hard to read at times. Again, I'm sure most people won't feel the same as me on this, and it won't really cause them any issues, but I did want to point it out nonetheless. 
And really, that's about it. I enjoyed my time with AUDN Chronicle Rising, and for the $14.99 asking price, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Especially if you are someone who's looking forward to 100 Heroes, as writing provides an opportunity to get acquainted with the world of AUDN Chronicles and some of its key characters. Otherwise, it's a fun, charming little action RPG that is well-paced and worth giving a shot if you're into 2D action RPGs. But that's all. If you found this video helpful and informative, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And remember, if you have any questions about this video, Auden Chronicle Rising, or any other game that I cover, you can always hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash roslingaming, or on my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description below. Until next time, take care.